Hello and welcome to Good Clean Gaming. I'm your host, Jolindo, and today we're doing an Ice Planet tutorial. If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to show you the location right here on the on the map. Um, and uh, if you haven't played the game before or you haven't watched my desert tutorial, you'll probably want to watch that first because otherwise this is going to be really too... It's not going to make a whole lot of sense. But if you played it before and you've seen the original tutorial, this should make a lot of sense. I'm going to skip all the basic stuff. We're just going to talk about the build order the thoughts, the changes, what's different about the ice planet, all that kind of stuff. Uh, first off, uh, you're going to start out with different amounts of materials. You start out with five less meals, five less metal, five less bioplastic, five less medical supplies, but you start with the same number of spares for repairing your power generation. But, you know, basically five less of almost everything. So uh, the, you have to alter your build. So my, my desert build is based on what, what I had available. So this is based off having less. So you start with a regular sized oxygen generator, then you follow that up with a regular sized solar panel. Link those two together, and then you're wanna, gonna wanna add a large, large as possible uh, power collector. Link those together, and you're gonna wanna add a large as possible water extractor. And I like to put that right there next to the solar panel, and then we're gonna end up putting a wind turbine as soon as the solar panel's up. As soon as that oxygen generator is up, you're going to want to add a processor plant or a processing plant. Link that up. You, I, 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 I like to do lines usually toward the nearest mountain, just like in the original tutorial. But, yeah, I mean, you can be flexible. You don't have to build perfect lines or anything like that. Somebody was kind of concerned that they wouldn't be able to build lines. Uh, just just build whatever works. Here I have a little crooked line at the end, and I'll just put a, I'll put a mine next to it. Solar panels up, so I'm going to throw on the largest possible wind turbine. So far, everything's looking good. So uh, you notice that oxygen generator needs the it doesn't have water yet. So the water extractor is coming up now, and boom, there's the oxygen generator now operating. So now it's just waiting for people to kind of move stuff around. Uh, it looks like some uh, a medic and a bio biologist has gone um, idle. So now we're going to add the canteen, just regular sized, of course. Unless stated otherwise, everything's regular sized, like initial size, smallest possible. Um, but I like to start moving to largest possible once I have the extra materials. But it takes a little longer on the ice planet. It's, uh, go, take it slower. Uh, one of the things about the ice planet, so here, I, by the way, I added a dorm and a canteen. One of the things about the ice planet is there's less power generated from solar panels. So uh, in this tutorial, I'm showing you how to basically focus on wind power. The downside to this is that random number generator, the, 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 uh, the wind turbines, the power generation is based on kind of a random number generator a little bit. It moves up and it moves down. It's not consistent is basically the point. And so you may run into situations where the wind's just not blowing ever and because the game hates you, <laughs> because it hates me sometimes too, um, because because it because it just it, it's give, it giving you no wind energy, you're gonna run into brownouts. That's gonna happen in this level now and then. Um, I'm gonna try to give you enough wind energy so that it's very rare. Um, so I just build the landing pad, and the mine next to the airlock. You want to do that just like the desert tutorial. Uh, there, and you want to get that landing pad because if you don't, you're stuck with like seven colonists until you get a landing pad, and that can really slow down your your production your your building every it slows down everything your resources and then you're going to have trouble getting a factory in time to build spares so you really want to get that landing pad with your initial starting resources here i've added two bunks to that dorm make sure you have at least two bunks starting out and i like to kind of have at least half as many bunk beds as colonists so i added two bunks that's four beds i have seven colonists that's about right um, so you want to have about at least half. Ideally, you want to have one bed for every one colonist, but that's not generally not going to be likely until later in the game. In the canteen, I've added the table, I've added the mill maker, and the water fountain, and the television, and just one of each, just to get things going. You don't need all of them immediately. I just like to have them, just because you tend to have a little more bioplastic than than metal early in the game. So I like to, you know, just go ahead and have those things set up so they can use them. In the processor plant, which is right up front, you're going to want to build those uh, two metal processors because you're going to want a lot of metal early in the game. And, and I've, I've switched to, to building two of those. Go straight 100% workers on your landing permissions. Uh, and you'll want to get... By, by, you, you'll want to let basically two colony ships come with workers. And no matter how many workers 
get dropped off by those colony ships. After about two, maybe three, you want to switch it to kind of 50-50 biologist workers. Um, so sometimes you'll get one, sometimes you get two, sometimes you get three out of those colony ships. No matter how many you get, after about two colony ships, switch to 50-50 so that you can start generating more food especially once that biodome comes up it's gonna the the two biologists you start with are gonna start are gonna struggle to kind of keep up with those plants that we build so here i've added the uh the biodome's been built but the corridor connecting it needs to be built once that gets built we're gonna throw in some plants and we'll go over that as soon as, as soon as that gets finished those engineers are taking their time here, because everything's pretty much laid out, normally I'd wait for that corridor to be built. But once everything's, once you're all your initial resources have been used, uh, you want to throw in, uh, you saw I put in a, another wind turbine. You kind of want to push, early on you want to push for two wind turbines. Because the because you're getting less from that solar panel initially, you're going to want to get a little more power. So the, the large, largest possible wind turbine, you want two of those as early as possible. Here I've added three wheat, three tomatoes, and I debate back and forth whether or not I want tomatoes or wheat on this last spot. And then um, medical uh, medical plants in that last corner there. Here I'm going to make it. I'm going to end up making it six wheat, three tomatoes in this biodome, and that seemed to work really well with the way I played played this initial kind of um, tutorial. So now now all the engineers are kind of getting caught up. You know they're building the bunks they're a little late building those bunks they're they're needing to build the all the canteen stuff and all the biodome stuff's all queued up so everybody's got a lot of stuff to move everybody's got a lot of stuff to build so it's 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 going in the right direction so here we kind of just need to wait we need to wait for everybody to, to catch up we need to wait for the engineers to build everything and then once everything's caught up and we kind of we kind of stabilize a little bit um we're gonna build more so let's see what that looks like in a minute i'm going to fast forward between things i need to talk about so the game will go a little faster here we go so here we have an engineer um kind of finishing up the biodome all the plants are getting put together and then that'll give the biologist something to do so at this point your biologists have work to do your workers have work to do your engineers are still building things so they're busy uh your medic is the only one that's going to be kind of idling and wandering around not doing anything um so we're going to get them working later on um so at this point uh the reason why i built the way i did here is if you add up the auction generator and you add up the water fountain and you add up the uh, 10 plants in the biodome it comes up to 3.75 and that just happens to be the minimum it's 50 percent of your water extractor well your water extractor can do 7.5 but the minimum that that water extractor will ever ever do is 3.75 which is one half of that 7.5 and so if you make 10 plants one water fountain and one small oxygen generator uh, you'll never run out of water until you add something else that uses water so it's a good stable position for your water extraction until you get caught up and things go start going in the right direction. So if you look at the biodome, everything's kind of uh, needing help, needing maintenance. This is at this point we're going to start switching over to that 50/50 I talked about, and start getting more biologists in there to help out with those plants. One thing really important, uh, keep an eye out on your population. Uh, you have a small oxygen generator uh, on this start, which means that you can only have 20 colonists without running into oxygen generation issues. So you want to get up, we're going to get our population up to 20 colonists, and then we're going to hold it there. You can keep going if you're really experienced, you got a lot of finesse, but it's, it's a lot easier if you just hold things at 20 and then kind of generate a couple some materials some resources get your factory running start generating spares get your lab and your your sick bay just all those other things just get get one of everything built that you really need and then you can start growing again and you'll you'll have a better infrastructure to support that um yeah so by, uh, at 20 you're going to want to have about 10 workers so when, when you hit the 20 colonist mark that's going to be about 10 workers and I have the, the, the sound running in the background, don't I? Um, 
Yep, ten workers, and you're gonna have seven biologists, two engineers, one medic. That's gonna be twenty. Ten workers, seven biologists, two engineers, one medic. And that'll be just a perfect stable position. You'll be generating lots of ore. You'll be generating lots of starch. You'll be turning that into uh, metal and bioplastic and just building, building, building. It, it's a good, nice, stable thing to do. So, yeah, get up to 20 at, at, at 10, 7, 2, 1. And then sit there, build everything up. And then once it's stable, once you got everything built that you want to build, um, we'll, we'll talk about expanding beyond that. Here I've added two more bioplastic processors because at this point um, you're going to want to start, see where if you look at the top right we're out of bioplastics. So we're going to want to get those bioplastic generators or processors built um, so that we can start making bioplastics again. Uh, you'll notice uh, the game hates me enough that, that the wind is totally gone right now and so our wind turbines were not able to keep that battery full um when that happens just remember you can turn off your grid it's 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 more likely to happen on the ice planet than the other planets mainly because of the reduced solar energy and the reliance on the kind of randomness of the wind turbines so just remember that grid screen and the base management screen go to the grid the power grid and disable all non-vital structures let your battery build back up at least to like 20 percent and then turn everything back on and the, your, your colonists will recover and it's better to do that it's much better to, to disable your power grid and let power build back up than it is to just let it run and kind of turn off and on everything constantly that's horrible you're in fact you're losing energy if you're generating 20 and your base is taking 25 basically you're just you're losing out on a lot of efficiency letting it build up for a while you know so yeah gonna add some more beds here because we have basically outstripped the use of these two they're always full so we want to have a little little more sleeping room and yeah during this period just kind of look around see what needs to be fixed see what needs to be done um at some point uh, the the miners the workers in the mine will start to get injured they'll have a little broken bone over their heads um that happens it's a random chance whenever they're in the mine uh one gameplay you'll go through and like all your workers will get injured or a lot of them will get injured pretty quickly another playthrough you'll you'll you won't get any injuries for a while like this playthrough i didn't get heart uh, i didn't get any injuries early on which was kind of odd i'm used to having more injuries early but once you see that first broken bone you can just go ahead and set up your sick bay put a bed in there you start with five medical supplies so you can get that one person patched up and then you want to immediately after you get the sick base set up we're going to immediately get try to get a lab set up as soon as possible after that so uh don't need to do it yet but you may need to do it earlier than i do it here if you start seeing your injuries earlier so i wanted to point that out So you notice we have two ore, three starch, and our workers are doing a pretty good job on those processors, getting those things loaded and getting them processed into goods that are pretty much immediately being used. We have a need for so many resources right now that everything's going to get used pretty much immediately. Um, we haven't built a storage yet, and that's not part of the opening build. And the stuff that's outside is not going to rot. It's going to stay there for a while. Well, it will rot eventually, but it's not going to rot in the amount of time we're going to leave it out there. So just let it sit there. It'll be fine. And uh, once we get a storage set up, it'll actually repair all the damage that the uh, sitting outside has done to it. Nothing actually happens to the stuff outside until it completely rots and then it just disappears.
One thing to keep in mind is without a storage, your uh, the amount of bioplastic you can have on hand is six because there's only three slots in each of those machines that we set up. So you have two machines, you have six storage. So once you get up to six bioplastic, you're not making any more bioplastic to use it. So I'm, I went ahead and set up the um, the bunks, extra bunks for when we have 20. When you have 20 colonists, you're basically going to be using all those beds at night. So might as well set them up. But we got our first injury now. So now is, now is the time we're going to want to set up that sick bay. Normally I don't like to put very much off off the canteen, but in this case... I've got a sick bay, and there's not a lot of foot traffic generated by sick bay, so I'll just I, I go ahead and just attach it there. That works fine. Um, the the kind of the rule of thumb about canteens is you don't want to encourage people to walk through canteens, so you don't want to put like a canteen between a storage and a biodome. That would be horrible. But it, you can you can make attachments to other buildings. Uh, it doesn't have to be treated completely like a dead end. You can make attachments to other buildings um, when it doesn't generate foot traffic if it does generate too much foot traffic you'll run out of oxygen and that's kind of what you want to avoid with a canteen or with a dorm uh in fact the main one's the canteen because it's not a dead end um dorm already has its issues because you can have like you know tons of people in there at once and then um it can it can cause your auction to really have issues if you don't have an auction generator directly attached to it so i as, as stated in the original tutorial always want to connect a auction generator directly to the canteen and directly to a dorm uh, otherwise, you just you, you're just asking for problems. Another thing you want to look at is um, if you look in the top right, uh, we are still at ten spares. Once you see that ten go down to nine, that means that the power generators are through with their basically being new state. And once they're when they're new, when when like a solar panel or a wind turbine is new, there's a period of time where they don't need repairs and they'll be in perfect shape. For a long time but then after a couple days their integrity will start going down and they'll start requiring repairs so once you see that go down from 10 to 9 immediately start looking at how can i get a factory set up because you're going to want to start building more spares otherwise your power generation will just keep getting worse and you'll run out of spares and then everyone will die um hey i brought that back everyone will die um so yeah, getting a sick base set up. We're getting another power collector set up because we're starting. We're going to start using more energy here. We want to have an extra battery so we don't run into that situation. You know, two batteries, two windmills, so we don't run into that situation where we're having blackouts because there's no wind. It just you know, kind of another backup uh, to prevent that from happening. At this point, we're at 19 colonists. Usually, I'd prefer to have 20, but since we're at 19, I don't want to. I don't want to risk getting like two or three, which is actually about a 50/50 shot of getting two or three versus one. Um, probably a little more than a 50/50 shot, and so I don't want to risk, you know, over overdoing it with the oxygen. You probably could go to 21 and 22 and not have any issues, but uh, it's just because you'll have some people who are outside. And you don't have to give the oxygen to people outside. So if you have two workers outside, you actually only have 19. If you have 21 total, you only have 19 inside. That's fine because you have a 20 oxygen generator. But um, it's just not worth the headache or the risk in my opinion. I'd rather just go ahead and stop, uh, stop it around 19 or 20. And then, you know, get everything stable and working from there. So I built the sick bay. I'm going to immediately build the lab because I want to give my uh, medic something to do when he's not you know treating people and he needs to start making more medical supplies otherwise we are going to run out so set, go ahead and set that up wherever it makes sense here i put it next to the processor plant you don't have to follow my design just you know follow the fundamentals and the then the principles of what i'm trying to do which is you know oxygen make sure the oxygen is okay make sure that i can expand in the right direction think about where the dead ends need to be etc you know um it's all logical stuff. It makes sense. Just you know, think it through and and build whatever makes sense. Here we have a lab coming up. We'll also get that corridor coming up. 
Um, and as soon as that happens, go ahead and just throw one medical workbench inside and that will let the medics start making those medical supplies. Uh, you only really need one per medic. So if you have, you know, if you end up with two medics later on, put two workbenches. If you have five medics, put five workbenches. And that's pretty much how you do the math. Um, a, a good rule of thumb for workers is you want to have one per machine plus uh, uh, three for each mine. So, you know, with this start, you'd have three for the mine plus four, so that'd be seven workers. However, I like to have a little more because you really want as many resources as possible and workers will sleep. So, you know, when one worker's asleep, another one might be working, you'd have a little overlap. So if you have 10 workers, uh, it usually works pretty well. Um, later in the game, less of an issue because you'll be generating a lot of resources pretty much constantly. But early in the game, you really want to max out as, take every opportunity to make resources that you can. So there I set up the uh, workbench and they're going to start making medical supplies as soon as that's built. Here you notice in the top right uh, our spares have gone down from 10 to 9. So I went ahead, I queued up that factory because I know once the spares start dropping, they're going to start dropping pretty quickly. They'll stay at 10 for a long time, but then once they start dropping, it's an emergency. So go ahead and set up that storage and uh, get it working if you can, it's not storage. Set up the factory and get it working if you can. Here I'm just kind of like showing you where I want, where I'm thinking about building things, kind of laying things out. Uh, it's it's okay to, to, to plan out like this. Just be careful because if you, if, if you leave those pads there and they start splitting resources between each of the pads, nothing will get built and it'll be bad. So good to plan, bad to leave those things set up unless you really want to build them or really want them to split their attention. Here, I think I do that for a little while, but, um, you know, if it starts becoming an issue, keep an eye on it. As soon as the factory's ready, you want to throw a spare workshop in there because that's pretty, that's really important. Just one spare workshop for now and then put it on high priority. That'll ensure that an engineer, whenever possible, whenever he's not building something, will be working on that spare workshop. Uh, he doesn't really have much else to do, but you just want to encourage him as much as you can. Same with the medical supplies. I, I just, you know, if that priority gets them an extra, you know, second on that device, I'm okay with it. So, you know, just set up priorities wherever it makes sense. I went ahead and set up that corridor between biodome and the canteen because I wanted to, they were they were doing a lot of walking around through four different rooms and I wanted to just go ahead and give them a shortcut because so much stuff flows between biodome and so much food goes between biodome and canteen that you know you might as well just give them a straight shot if you can but just make sure you don't set up anything that's going to encourage them to walk through allow them to deliver but don't give them any reason to walk through to a storage or to a processing plant or anything else on the other side of the canteen.
Here, a meteor hits my um, my processing plant, kills three workers. So I'm gonna check. Uh oh, we just lost three workers. And so at this point, I, I had to do the math really quick. But you want to have ten workers. And so in this case, I'm gonna end up changing that to a hundred worker, hundred percent workers, zero percent biologists. And yeah, if that happens, if you if you lose some colonists, turn colonists uh, the colonist ships back on. And have them start landing again but stop them remember to stop the colonist ships when it hits 20 until you get kind of everything caught up everything going So I got a storage set up, so they're going to start pull, pulling stuff in the storage, those spares and those medical supplies. Also, the food and starch will start getting stored in there. Um, at this point, if you look around my base, everything looks really good. The only thing I'm really missing that I would like to have right now, um, you, you want to get another processor plan. You want to get more water extractors, more wind turbines, things like that. But the real thing I need right now is uh, you want to get a control center pretty pretty. You don't want to wait too long. You don't, I mean, we're probably in no danger yet. But you want to go ahead and get that set up so you can call yellow alert because the very first disaster on the ice planet, if I'm not mistaken, is a solar flare. Um, and the solar flare can be completely devastating to you if you're not able to call yellow alert because all, a lot of your workers will get irradiated. Uh, anybody outside will get irradiated. It can be very, very bad. So try to get that control center up so you can call yellow alert and you won't have to lose any medical supplies or colonists. Here comes the uh, the worker to place that last piece of metal on my control center, and after that, the engineer will come and build it, and we'll be able to call yellow alert. So at this point, let's talk about what we would want to have in order to start expanding to moving past 20. We're pretty stable here. We got a lot of stuff. We got all these, all this infrastructure is really nice. But to start moving past 20, you're going to want to get a second large water extractor. Um, why would we want to do that? Well, we, we need that second large water extractor because we're going to need more water fountains. We're going to need more plants for food. Um, and we're gonna, so we're going to need a biodome. And that's all that's going to use more water. And so you're going to want to get that second large water extractor and a large water tank. That's one thing you're going to want to do to get ready for the beyond 20 place there. You can see we can now call yellow alert, and I'm very happy about that clearly. Um, so we're going to get that water tank. Uh, we're also going to get a, like I said, second drinking fountain because we now have enough water at that point to have a second drinking fountain. Uh, we'd also want to get a third wind turbine because having three is kind of, kind of important because you're going to start using more power and you're going to want to throw in why, why you, you want to throw in pretty much one power collector per wind turbine on this map just to make sure you have as much storage as possible for when the wind's just not blowing that's the main thing you're worried about is when the wind goes a prolonged period without blowing and that's why you want to have as many batteries filled up as possible you also want to have another processing plant um you want to move your bioplastic over to the second the uh, processing plant nearer to the biodome you want to have the other uh, processor plant for the mine exclusively um, I'm, I'm just basically showing you where you want to place everything uh, you want to throw another auction generator and you don't want not you don't want to need to place it where I place it here you want to place it where it makes sense I'm just kind of demonstrating what you want to build so another auction generator for moving past 20 you're gonna to want to get a storage and another basically a large storage and a large biodome for more food and more storage because the one we built the storage we built on the right is going to fill up really quick and the biodome we built is already pretty much maxed out with the amount of colonists we have so you, yeah you want to build a lot of a lot of this stuff um you don't have to build it immediately but this is stuff you want to build kind of quickly after the the 20 um you start getting above 20. 
Soon you also, uh, soon after you get all those things, you'll also want to grab a bar and a multi dome for morale because you're gonna, gonna starting to start having some morale issues at some point. And you want to make sure you have something set up for uh, for handling all that. And yeah, once you pretty much get all that laid out, you're in good shape. You're pretty much ready to go past. I mean, you, you get the extra oxygen ready, you get the extra power and the extra water. You're ready to go past twenty. And then after that, you start building out all the rest that I showed you, and uh, just keep it stable. Get to 50 because you're gonna you're gonna be able to get 50 if you have the large oxygen generator. Get to 50, and then get it stable again, and then keep moving like that. So take it with stages, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, remember, uh, uh, remember if you have any questions, just just comment on the on the channel on this video. I'll be glad to answer whatever questions you have. If there's any kind of um, anything you found that you want to share with others, feel free to share that. I would love to kind of hear your input. And uh, yeah, so feel free to click that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. And uh, remember, keep it clean.